Hey there, we are continuing with Monster Manual, the letter E. And uh, so first one is a uh, giant eagle. And that of course got relegated to the animals, ear seekers. Uh, so the original Monster Manual had a whole class of things that were just uh, what I would call dungeon hazards. And in my Monster Manual, there's gonna be a section for that, like, uh, for example, uh, rot grubs or uh, green slime that don't have hit points, they just do a certain thing. Eel, Ifriti, so now what's interesting here is that an Ifriti, I don't think Jin is in here. Let's, uh, let's go to the D session, let's go to DJ and see if there's anything, and there is not. There's no genie, at least under D, oh yeah, there is, oh! Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Oh my gosh. Okay, so yeah, here you go. So, um, uh, uh, genies are, uh, what is the chaotic good? Yeah, so they're good. Ifridis are evil, and that's kind of that's kind of how it was set up. Now, in the modern monster manual, these are all under uh, genies with a G. So not DJ. That was too confusing for people, apparently. And uh, let me just see if I can find it. Got giants. Yeah, here you go. So what happened is Genie and Afriti got classed as uh, genies with a uh, G. And of course they gave them a great introduction. And I think this is a much better way to do this. So the four elements, um, earth, fire, air, and water, each have a corresponding uh, creature. So the Tao are earth, and Marids are water. So, but did these appear in the early Dungeons & Dragons publications? Yes, they did. Guess what? What am I about to pull out here? ba -da! Lost Caverns of Sawcanth, which had, as I mentioned in an earlier video, it had this, oh no, that's the adventure booklet. It had this Monsters and Magical Items, and this was basically like a mini magic excuse me, a mini monster manual, and it had this illustration, and Dao. Uh, I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but that's the Earth version of the, uh, of the genie. And so were Marids in there as well? I think possibly, and if they're not, then I think I know where to go next. Yeah, nope, that also appears. And they're actually in the dungeon too, so Marid. So this thing that we have modernly, which has genies with the four different elemental types all grouped together, that is, that is where they came from. The genie and the Afridi were in the Monster Manual and Lost Caverns had the other two types. So pretty exciting for that. So we then move on to the elementals. So uh, elementals really, um, in the original Monster Manual, just sort of gives a thing and there's there is a, a blurb at the beginning uh, that gives different hit dice of elementals so they were scalable like the dragons uh, but they only had three sizes small medium and large and uh, of course how to summon them and uh, of course all of this conjuration and summoning and stuff that uh, ties into the, the satanic panic like oh they're conjuring evil creatures no they're actually just having an imagination uh, so we continue with Elf. Now in, uh, oh boy, so where do you even start with this? So this has a, a page packed with stuff and in the Monster Manual. And in the uh, Player's Handbook for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which we would understand as, um, as first edition, they have, uh, let's see here, abilities, races, um, gnomes, uh, I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure elf is a race. Come on, be good to me now. Institution, character race, magic user, dwarf. Yeah, so elves were, uh, like in the original, original, like Dungeons and Dragons, elf and dwarf were more like a class that you would play. And that, of course, came directly from uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's work, uh, The Lord of the Rings, where, you know, the Fellowship of the Ring was kind of like, that's how they put this game together, that that's what was in the imagination of people, 
And uh, so this was a step forward by saying, well, elves could be fighters or magic users or whatever. Of course, in first edition Dungeons and Dragons or advanced Dungeons and Dragons, uh, they uh, there's a ton of limitations on what you can do. And it wasn't until second and third edition that you started to be able to have like halfling paladin uh, and uh, elf barbarians and stuff like that. So uh, going on with the ease, we've got an Etten, which of course has reincarnated in a zillion things. I floating. This is kind of a uh, it's kind of a hazard. Let's see. No, that's that. Yeah, kind of. It doesn't really have attacks or anything. Now the cool thing here is Eye of the Deep, and I am not sure if the Eye of the Deep has made a an appearance in. Uh, fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I would have to look it up, but I don't want to take time doing that on uh, the video. Actually, I'm already making my my way to it. But uh, while I'm doing that with one hand, uh, we go on to F, Flightless Bird, Frog Giant, and Fungi Violet. And uh, so really not much to say there. They're just animals, giant versions of animals. Um, and of course, these have been relegated to the back part of the monster manual. So there were a whole bunch of hazards. Uh, I've written a whole two-page treatise on Violet Fungi for my monster manual. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. So, okay, hold on. I'm looking up uh, 5E... So I think I'm going to make it on this video. Yeah, I'm definitely going to... Nope. There's a movie called Eye of the Deep. Uh, yeah, no, here it is. Uh, but I think it's like a, a fan page here. So that's weird. Eye of the Deep, I'm really sad, has not made it into 5th edition, if, if that's the case. You, you know, you guys are just going to have to correct me. Because I think it's a really cool monster, it has a cool appearance, does a cool thing, and uh, the Eye of the Deep actually was integrated, the first module that, into which it was integrated was uh, S3, which I'm going to pull out right now for my handy dandy collection of modules. If I can find it, yes I can, it's right in there. So this is one where obviously from the front cover you see a guy with a laser pistol. Uh, you can find like advanced items and this one like Lost Caverns was uh, Lost Caverns I think is S2. This is S3 or is it S4? Yeah, it's S4. S2 is a uh, White Plume Mountain. All right, so anyway, this one also had a bunch of really cool monsters that we know and love now. I love the look at this illustration of this Mind Flayer. It's been trapped on this spaceship. And it like, uh, oh, the art is just so evocative. Oh my gosh. And then here, of course, you have the Veg Pygmies. Um, now you might think, hey, they haven't really updated this module. And the answer is no, they haven't, as far as I know. Uh, I, and I think they really should. And give it, this could easily have like a whole two books associated with it. So uh, this is the adventure. And then, of course, they got... Um, they have this here, which is, a, uh, no, I'm sorry, this is the art book, and it has like loads and loads of cool art. Uh, a lot. And what's interesting is the deadliest encounter in any module is these guys. They're called gas bats. So, hold on, I just, I just want to, just, this is great, and this is Gygax's uh, genius. Oh, here's the encounter with Eye of the Deep there. Uh, oh yeah, it's just so cool. So anyway, it's, it's, it's in this module. I'm going to see, just see if I can find the gas bats really quick. Here, uh, where are they? Deadly reptiles? Okay, so basically there's an area where there's a thousand gas bats. And if you go in there and you have like a torch or something, they start dive bombing you and exploding. And so basically if you're not smart, like if you don't put those torches out right away, they, it's like 500 D6 of damage. It's absolutely, it's absolutely nuts. And uh, so Gygax, I mean, he's famous for Tomb of Horrors, and I'm going to review that module too. I think I really should. Uh, 
is famous for like these killer dungeons. But if you read it, it's actually his dungeons just have a lot of suicide machines in them. Like they're things where if you're just, you know, if you're not paying attention, you don't care for whatever reason, you're just, you're like kind of eating some pretzels or distracted, then yeah, you end up, you end up basically killing yourself. All right, so um, Gargoyle obviously has made it into things. Gelatinous Cube. Uh, I think this is an original monster. I'm not sure, but I bet it came out of uh, Guy Gax's own head. Ghost, which comes out of folklore. Uh, ghoul, Ghast. These things all find their origins here. And uh, Gas Spore is really cool because it looks like a beholder, but when you hit it, it explodes. And that monster actually makes its first module appearance in, uh, I'm going to say, C1. See if I can find it. Yep, and I can find it. Lost Shrine of Tomoakan. And I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this module is incredible. So get this if you can. It is, it, it's, it's so thick with just amazing ideas. And look at, the, look at the text. This is how the modules used to be because it was hard to get art. And, you know, uh, it was hard to get art, but easy to get writing. Now it's starting to become the opposite. So uh, one thing to look for when you're buying old module, modules and to ask about is staple rust and if the binding is coming out. And of course, uh, the things in my collection are almost 100% play copies, which is a nice way of saying they're all old and beat up. They're not worth very much. I take no measures to protect them. I love them and use them and read them and play with them like... Uh, you know, like I would in the 1980s. So anyway, so uh, there's a gas spore that appears in this module. There's no illustration of it. Uh, just a bunch of them. I wonder how many appearing. One to three. That's not many. If they made that like a lot, that would make that a much more hazardous encounter. And then, of course, you got giants. And I'm going to do a completely separate thing on giants. And uh, let's see, goblins, uh, and the original art for goblins was a lot different than the goblins that we have now. Of course, Pathfinder goblins, and I don't really have one to show you, they uh, have a very distinctive look with their big old football Stewie Griffin heads. And, uh, oh, whoa, wrong way. Uh, so yeah, Gast and Ghoul have made their way into the modern uh, monster manual. Uh, giants, they have a whole big thing about their society, which I think is really cool, the ordning and all that. And then, of course, the six different types of uh, giants. And not all of them evil, so, you know, like, l let's just look at the alignments. Uh, cloud giant is, uh, is oh, I can, I can do this now, is neutral good or neutral evil. A fire giant is lawful evil. Frost giant is neutral evil. Hill giant is chaotic evil. So they have all different alignments. Uh, uh, stone Giant is neutral, which makes them very interesting. And, oh good, I'm coming up on time here. Uh, storm Giant is chaotic good. So you have uh, basically one giant type that's half good and another type that is always good. And, uh, but uh, I want to I look at the heights for these because like um, in, in well, you know what? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a whole thing on giants. I don't know why I'm spending time. Uh, Gibbering Mouther was not in the original Monster Manual, but did, guess what, make its first appearance in Shrine of Tomoakan. And so all these old early modules, that is, the, uh, th that is the place that you'll find these things. In fact, let me just see if I can find if the Gibbering Mouther is in the uh, original Ears illustration book, Shrine of Tomoakan. I don't think it is. Yeah, it's not. That's, that's really too bad. Uh, in Lords of Madness, that book that I was telling you about, which I really need to bring down so you can see it, uh, it uh, the, uh, the Gibbering Mouther really gets uh, like a full chapter explaining it. And it, it. This thing is terrifying. It's absolutely awful. And uh, let's see, I don't think it explains it. Uh, look by stone... Yep, there you go. Yeah, uh, your, your, it says that your mouth and eyes go to the top of it and begin to speak. But in Lords of Madness, they explain you're still conscious inside of the gibbering mouther. And uh, so it's really like a horror beyond the stars type of 
situation. So, oh, th here you go. New monsters, gibbering mountain. So that's that's the original illustration, and originally what it is. And it actually retains, I think, uh, I think all of its powers. And uh, so, yeah, I just so it's uh, it, it's that it's really cool. So that's that's where that comes from. Uh, all right, I just got like one minute left. Let's see if I can go through and gif. Oh yeah, there you go. The, the, get the Yankee. Yeah, I'm not even making it past the G's. So these actually make their first appearance. Guess what? The cover of the Fiend Folio. Sorry, I'm doing these things like from the side because that's kind of how the setup is. Where am I? 15 minutes. Good. Still going strong. All right, and those appear in uh, the Fiend Folio. And look at this exquisite full page of art. The art in the Fiend Folio is absolutely insane. It is so evocative and just like it. This is like, this is dark fantasy, guys. This is old school rules. And I mean, look at, look at how much more meaner this Gith the Yankee is than this one. You know, this guy, I mean, he looks mean, but this one looks like just this alien terror, crazy stuff. And uh, they, of course, were psionicists, and m much of the history is uh, still intact, if not all of it. Uh, I don't know for absolutely certain. Uh, Knowles, nothing to say there. Something cool they've done in the modern monster manual is they give you some options of things. Uh, Deep Note, Swerf Neblin, uh, I think they make their first appearance in Descent into the Depths of the Earth, which is uh, scanning 1978. Wow, that's old school, man. So uh, let me just see if I can find them. Look at these. Look at this illustration of the drow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, and I, if I recall correctly, they have like pitch black skin. And of course, a lot of the lore has been changed over the years. So uh, where are we? Somewhere in here, there's a thing about Sverf No, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Hold on. Hey, there, there it is. Ta-da! Encounter area in, uh, uh, I think, the last, or, yeah, a one, D1 or D2. So it says, uh, D -d 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 deep gnomes hate the Kuatoa people as much as they despise the drow. And so they can be uh, your ally. So there you go. There's the first appearance of the Sverf and Evelyn, uh, the deep gnomes. And uh, that's where those come from. And, of course, not much to say about goblins. Oh, golems. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to make... Well, wait a minute. I started with the E's, right? Yeah, I'm doing good. I thought I started with the G's for some reason. I was like, oh, I didn't even make it halfway through. Yeah, we're going to talk about golems in the next one. And, of course, now with various uh, things. And I really just got to blurb out uh, Tome of Beasts by Kobold Press. This is a must-own for any self-respecting dungeon master. All right, so, uh, so just so this uh, module doesn't go, or excuse me, this video doesn't go over, i got to stop it now. Because for whatever reason, this camera will split it into two videos, uh, like one that lasts for 20 seconds, which is lame. But anyway, there's other golems.